Welcome to Inspiring Stories with Hanson Surge. Discover the journeys, challenges and triumphs of some rising professional stars in London and around the world. Looking for some inspiration to revitalize your career? Tune in. Hi, my name is Alice Waitman. I'm the CEO of Hanson Search. I'm here today with Karen Boswell, Interactive Lead for Adam and Eve DDB and winner of Women of Tomorrow Awards 2016. She's here to share some of her career advice and top tips for women progressing in the world of advertising and the digital. So um, thanks so much indeed, um, Karen, for joining us today. Pleasure to be here. Um, you've had an incredible um, career to date, working with some of the most amazing agencies and brands. Could you let me know which one really stands out in terms of a major achievement for you? Such a big question. Um, yes, I think probably for many different reasons. Uh, I think one of the the biggest challenges, and therefore one of the the most sort of um, successful points of my career, uh, was when I went over to Tokyo to work with uh, Nissan. Um, and I was heading up a uh, digital transformation program, um, and it came into the agency uh, as a as a small brief to identify uh, a, a specific technical um, requirement from their side, uh, and it resulted two years later in leading quite pioneering results um, for lots of different uh, advertising and platform solutions. I think the reason that was really uh, overall was. Um, not only was I working on the other side of the world, mm. um, was working with uh, a huge team across many different locations, uh, was working with an agency team based in London. We were opening up a Tokyo office at the same time, um, sat with uh, quite a traditional uh, male senior team um, in, in Tokyo. Uh, where I was working with a, a phenomenal Texan guy who was my client uh, and I suddenly found myself um, on the other side of the world with a team back in London in a company where I didn't speak the language I was probably half the age of most of the team um, one of two women um, in a team of 70, 80 odd people wow. Um, with people who had uh, worked from the factory floor all the way up to very senior positions and um, the industry over there doesn't change quite as rapidly as it, as it does here and, and it's quite a traditional um, culture where you sort of you start a job and, and you spend 20, 25 years there so suddenly I come in and I'm like mm. hello we're going to do this big transformational stuff and they're all looking at me going I'm sorry who are you? Yes. <laughs> um, but we had a, I was working for a brilliant agency with an amazing client who was open to, to listening and, um, you know, sort of six months of uh, working out all the parts and putting a plan in place meant that we uh, came up with a very robust roadmap, um, which is now being put into place. It was sort wow. of a three to five year roadmap and various other agencies are now involved. Yes. Um, but it was a huge turnaround point from this small little brief to suddenly, you know, a, a huge, great big work stream. And yeah. I think probably one of the turning points of my career, uh, being entrusted by the agency I worked for to just go to the other yes. side of the world and yeah. help lead something like that. And I learned an incredible amount. I was going to say, I mean, that must have been a huge learning curve for you um, in terms of culture, but also, um, you know, working as a female in a very male-dominated environment. And do you think there's key tips that you've learned from during that process um, that really stand you in good stead today? Absolutely. I think um, attitudinally, uh, it, it and, and this was not just about being a woman, but it was about being in someone else's territory. Um, and I think there's a lot of parallel learnings. I think attitudinally, I really had to slow down. Mm. I think I was quite feisty. Yeah. Um, I still am, but in a more considered way, I guess. Um, but quite feisty, quite ambitious, sort of like really sort of driving the pace forwards. Um, and one of the things I learned very quickly was never to underestimate the expertise of the people around me. And respect is something that you earn, and you can do that if you just have the confidence that you are doing the right thing um, as a person. I yes. think, and uh, it wasn't really until my second or third week there that I, I actually did stick my head up and kind of go, 
it's kind of odd that I, you know there aren't really many women here it really sort of struck me because yes. I think you know I'm used to working with a bit more of a mixed team um, and it was one of the first times working with um, uh, one of the senior clients there lovely lady um, and she actually came to me for advice she was like how do you do it how how are you a woman I was like hey and it really yes. made me think well actually I'd always always strive to be the best person I've always you know sort of questioned myself double checked everything um, and and kind of just sort of stick to what you know it's like yes. if, if you don't know the answer there's nothing wrong with saying I'll go and check that or I'll go and find out or I'll go and find the right expert um, and actually especially in that environment where I was surrounded by automotive experts mm. who have hands-on experience and have moved into marketing or moved into digital or technology um, they will always know more about their brand than you ever will mm. so always respect that but have faith that you know about your expertise so yeah. if you're a creative or if you're a, a, a tech person or if you're in client services or project management they have hired you for your skill have the confidence that you are good at what you do yes. and I think um, with that kind of honest and open approach people will learn how to work with you and that's where you get the results from yeah absolutely I think it's fantastic advice really having that confidence and believing in yourself so you know you mentioned um, uh, when we were chatting earlier about you a mentor to um, people in the industry have you got a mentor in your life I mean has anyone inspired you and taught you these things to help you believe in yourself yeah I have um, I have a few different mentors actually uh, I have one in particular who was my uh, my boss at my last agency um, and has since become a really good friend um, and remains a mentor um, and she's absolutely fantastic like I cannot say enough good things about her she is she is my muse like she's a feisty little um, like Tinkerbell-esque uh, woman with the most amazing amount of grit um, she um, she's got like four children she commutes in from like the south of England um, she sort of like holds down like an amazing marriage. Um, she's extreme sports, all of this kind of stuff. And then she has an incredibly senior position, um, at a huge network, um, at, at the board of you know some really really strong people. Mm. And I've seen her in action in the boardroom. Yes. Um, and she walks in and she doesn't demand presence. She just has presence. Like yes. people acknowledge that she's there, and she's got such a way with um, people I think one of the things that I really learnt to to kind of hone from her was um, an idea is great but it is always always the people and I'm a huge advocate in the fact that it's about um, it's about the people um, and if you put the right blend of people together then you know you can make something amazing happen um, and she has this great ability that she sort of worked with me over a, a period of a couple of years to hone about just sort of looking at the bigger puzzle and moving the pieces around so that everybody has something that they're passionate about and then magical things happen. Yes. Like, you know, you put the right blend of people in a room, give them a little spark and... Great know, things can happen. Stuff happens. Yes. Um, and she's great at that. She sounds amazing. Now, everyone does always ask me, because I always recommend people, go and get a mentor, have someone in your life who you can bounce ideas from. And actually, I think it was my daughter that once told me that. She said, Mommy, you need to go and find someone um, who you can bounce ideas off and preferably not pay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, you know, you're so wise. But how did you find your mentor? Mentor, Because lots of people would love to have a mentor, but don't know about how to go and get them. So how did you find yours? I was lucky enough that I was working with her at the time. That said... I sought her out and asked to be on a project with her because she was the MD um, and I was a good couple of rungs below her and, and I kind of had her marked in my peripheral Yes. and I just went up to her one day and said the next thing that comes along that does this, this and this that you think that I can have a go at I'd, I'd love to put my name in and I had to wait a few months until that opportunity came up Yes. Um, but she, she took a risk on giving me that opportunity and there was absolutely no way I was going to let her down and, and, and the rest I guess is history um, so I guess that's probably a straightforward scenario. Um, I mean, I mentor people uh, still f that I've managed in the past, uh, people that I've just seen, um, you know, maybe need a little bit of help. So I'm quite proactive in, in 
saying to people, do Can come I to me for advice, yeah. and that's absolutely fine. Um, and and openly say to people, you know, if if you're struggling, then you know, come and have coffee. Um, I guess if there's somebody that you respect or that that you want to ask for advice, it's. I mean, I'm always flattered when people come to me. Mm. I think people assume you're busy or you're caught up in it, but yeah. they will make time. So if if you respect someone or you know, you think there's a way to be connected in with somebody, just ask around and, yes. you know, you'd be surprised just dropping an email what you might get back. You might not get it back straight away because these people are normally quite busy, but I would say just, you know, have a look at who you respect and, and find a way to yeah. be connected. I think it's a great idea. I think, I think you're right. People are far more wanting to help than not and yeah. actually just reaching out. Um, people will be flattered the fact that you think Absolutely. Um, you can Absolutely. offer that advice. Yeah. So um, thinking about the industry, what do you think is the sort of biggest barrier that's preventing women from getting to the top within the digital and advertising world? I think a lot of it um, comes to confidence and, and I've mentioned this a couple of times, I'll probably say it a few times throughout it because I do, I think men have a tendency to just say yes yeah, and women have a tendency to go to sort of say, "Ooh, ooh, can I?" It's like, what's the worst? Just say yes. I mean, it's a bit of a life value for me. I often just yes. say yes, and then kind of go, "Oh uh, dear, <laughs> <laughs> now what? Perhaps I shouldn't have done that. Perhaps I shouldn't have gone down that side of the mountain." But um, yeah. you know, there's I, I think just have that confidence and um, and go for it. And I think especially in advertising, a lot of learning happens on the job and on the go and you're forever pivoting and turning and you don't necessarily have to have the absolute answer to absolutely everything. And we work in an industry that's collaborative. We work in an industry that's that's open and, and moves at 100 miles an hour. So there's a lot of moving parts. Um, so it's kind of jumping in and being a part of that momentum. Um, and then I think speaking up as well. I think um, I've I've come across sort of people from varying different backgrounds who think that perhaps they don't have the right to be in the position that they are, uh, and I think unless you say something, which I guess kind of comes back to confidence as well, but you know, and and that doesn't have to be a sort of shouty, stampy way of of saying it. It could be asking the right question at the right point in time, yes. or it could be you know. Um, going along to a meeting proactively that perhaps you think you might want to be a part of because mm. that could open up a door for you or it could be networking or it could be you know asking to be on the list of something or just you know being seen and yes. being heard yeah um and i'm not saying throw total caution to the wind i think be aware of of what you're doing there's there's a line between considered outspoken and blasé outspoken yeah um but I think not sort of standing up for yourself. Like, if you don't believe in yourself, then why should anybody else believe in yourself? So do you think the onus is really on the the employee rather than the employer? Or do you think there's things that actually sort of senior um, boards need to do to help women get to the top? So the IPA have set a 40% target by 2020. Is there anything that actually businesses need to do to help women through that? Yeah, absolutely. I think it kind of comes in equal measures, actually. So for every piece of confidence an individual can show, I think an employer can show just as much encouragement. Uh, and I think the two go hand in hand. Um, and I think um, I'm very fortunate that I work for an agency that actively encourages diversity, especially in the, the sort of gender side of things. Um, but I'm very aware that there are others that aren't as proactive and there is that sort of, you know, ageing top tier of people that probably, they're probably more scared than you. Like, mm. they're fearing for their jobs because they've probably seen what you're doing and they know it's going to be better. Uh, and I think that sort of protective um, nature uh, can be damaging. Um, so I, I urge employers to embrace... Um, employing somebody better at your job than you are because that's how you will move forward. So I always try and find people that are better than I am and there are lots of them out there. <laughs> um, but I think that's a good thing because you're only ever as good as the team around you. You know, it's it's the sum of all parts yeah. on so many different levels and um, employers that help the best idea come to life not really thinking about whether it's theirs or someone else's will get better results. Absolutely. It's great advice. I think you're right. I think people are frightened, but hiring great talent is going to help you drive the business. Absolutely. So my last question, um, you know, what would be your 
best piece of career advice for women looking to build a successful career in the advertising world? Jump in. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> Jump in and give it a go. Yeah. Um, it's, it's incredibly exciting and incredibly diverse. And I think, um, I mean, my, my career has changed quite a lot in the sort of 15 years I've been um, working in this industry. Uh, I started it as, as a designer, learned some principles there. Um, I then went into more sort of a planning and, and client services role, um, learnt some more there, then moved more into strategy, and now I sort of work in um, sort of interactive and, and technology and innovations. Um, it pivots all the time, so I think find something you enjoy. Um, inevitably, if you're doing something you enjoy, it feels a bit less like work. You're going to be more passionate about it. We are an ideas-driven, passionate industry. Um, you get to work with fun, clever sometimes slightly weird people <laughs> just get involved and yeah. I think the more the more things you get involved with you see kind of the cross-pollination happening all the time um, and just don't be afraid to ask questions as well it changes so much our industry especially now where we're moving more into a technology driven digital driven um, consumer centric way of having to uh, build our brands and advertise our brands um, there's so many entry points and so many different skills that getting involved, you'll, you'll unearth lots of things that I think y you will find interesting. Yeah, good. Well, Karen, thank you so much indeed for your time. It's, it's been great speaking to you and I think a real inspiration for women looking to get into the industry and, you know, your, your career and background, I'm sure, will inspire other women to get into the industry but also to keep going because um, I hope so. you know I, I think it, it needs people like you to be out there winning these awards and talking about it that's going to help help the future absolutely Great. absolutely my Thank pleasure that was Karen Boswell in conversation with Alice Waitman for the Inspiring Stories podcast if you'd like to be on the show contact us on our website at www.hansonsearch.com Thanks for listening, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter for the latest news and stories at Hanson Search.